Hey guys, welcome to episode two of the EX podcast. I appreciate everybody that came into the chat and whoever's going to watch this YouTube video. Uh, like I said, this is episode two and tonight we have uh, Rainbow Six Pro Sean. Uh, he's going to tell you guys a little bit about himself, but I'll go ahead and start off for the people that don't really know who I am. I am John, owner and CEO of Excellence Gaming. I'm also going to be the host of uh, the EX podcast every single week. So, um, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pass it on over to Sean. We should have sound. We should have plenty of sound. Is it sound on the stream? No sound. What? How is there no sound? Hold on. Let's see. What the hell is going on here? What is going on? How's that, guys? That should be better. Talk. Now, now introduce yourself. The stream somehow it reset itself. Okay, good, good. All right. We all back? Yeah, we're back now. Go back. Ahead. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, Sean Martin, uh, Program of Six player for excellence, as you know. It's still there, John? Still got sound? I'm here, brother. You're good. You're good. Run um, with it now. Uh, yeah, we got, uh, you know, I got about 13 years of experience. I really started playing um, competitively back in Rainbow Six One and Rainbow Six Vegas Two. Uh, it took about a 10 year break, so I was excited to. Uh, to see that Rainbow Six was coming back with a new game and uh, really get an opportunity to get back into the competitive scene. And, and so far, it's been pretty fun. That's good, man. You know, uh, whenever, in, before the first season, whenever um, the former EX guys came to me and wanted to get into excellence in Rainbow Six, I was like, you know, uh, I really didn't know because Rainbow Six has never really been, it's never had a structured league say you know what I mean it's really never had the structure as let's say COD or even Halo or even CSGO so I, I didn't know you know but now I'm happy I did you know winning the first season championship and then currently right now within the top four at, at the minimum you know so we're, we're doing really good um, hard to hear me guys what the fuck it's the same fucking settings as last week Jesus Anyways, <laughs> anyways, uh, moving along, we're going to go ahead and go with um, this part of, of the uh, podcast. We do our, our topics, you know. Um, yeah, it's going to have it's going to have some bleed over. It is Skype, guys. You got to remember that. Um, but anyway, we're going to move on into the esports topic. Um, big names coming into esports, man. There's. Uh, I, I saw the other day they had Gillette coming in. Um, Shaq got in a few weeks ago with, with getting into NRG. He put some probably close to over a million dollars for his portion of it, you know. Um, you, you have TBS running the E-League. I mean, it's been a huge success as far as um, the E-League so far. So it, it's pretty it's pretty nice to, to see some of these big companies come in and, and invest their money into the into the scene um what what was your thoughts on that um yeah absolutely you know uh coming in playing competitive back 10 years ago uh we didn't we didn't have anywhere near the the scene that there is now to come back now and see you know big names shaquille o'neal um you know gillette all these bigger companies outside of gaming to really start putting money into um the the gaming uh, industry and then as you know, we talked earlier, you know, the business itself is growing exponentially, you know, 400% increases over the last 10 years or whatever the case may be. Uh, so, yeah, it's really nice to see the, the sport really growing and to, to see it on TV and especially with Twitch now to really see players playing on their downtime or whatever the case is. It's nice to uh, have so much exposure uh, for the sport itself. Yeah, 100%, man. Like, 
you you have people uh, just let's just break down e league for a second you know with e league the current setup is they play throughout the week on twitch just one side of the bracket or or a quarter of the bracket i should say plays on twitch during the week and whoever gets into the finals of that week they play on tbs that's a huge freaking deal, man. Like playing on TBS on live TV on on such a big network as TBS. I'm, I mean, you couldn't ask for better, honestly. Whenever whenever I see some of these commercials uh, that that have E League and CS:GO and you showing three pieces by this this guy and and that other guy, you're like what the shit am, this is live tv you know you, you're not you used to seeing that on twitch every single day everybody sees that on twitch every single day but whenever you flip in the channels trying to find something to watch on live tv and you come across csgo you're just amazed because of just the way that it has progressed even in the in the two years that excellence has been um been something you know it's it, it it's grown so much in two years, man. Like I, I couldn't believe, even in even in the past year, it's completely just tripled in size. You see all these bigger companies coming in, um, and, and just so many organizations come in. Some of these smaller guys come in, and not saying I'm we have a big organization by no means, but you have some of these just fly by night, just thinking they're going to come in and, and reap the benefits. And it's not always the case. Uh, I mean, if you're watching and you're trying to start up a, a, a esports organization, by all means, do your research, man. You have to have a good bit of money to start off and invest in yourself because if you don't, if you're just trying to rely strictly on sponsors to come out the gate it's not it's not that at all you know it takes a lot of hard work a lot of money to invest in yourself before you can actually do something with other companies you know and i think a lot of people fail to realize that they just think it's going to be real simple real easy to come out and automatically get um to get money from these big name sponsors uh, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, I know you know some of the the, the back end of esports, you know. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, <clears throat> from a player's aspect, um, you know, when you're, you're when you're looking, hey, uh, you know, we want to go with an org. You know, we know we're one of the top teams out there, so obviously you're gonna, uh, on a player's aspect, you're gonna want to go get into a team that you know is gonna take care of us. And my experience so far with with John and Excellence is you know, above and beyond, you know, if guys need something, hey, we got shit gear and this guy needs something that's going to make him play better, you know, John's going to make sure he's taken care of and we're going to be playing at the highest level possible. So absolutely, it's definitely not something easy to get into um, and to be able to say, hey, I'm a new org, but we'd like to pick up a top team. It's probably just not going to happen because they're going to have the pick of the litter. Right. They're that high up, you know. Oh, yeah, exactly. Um Whenever it comes to some of these superstar, uh, let's say like CSGO, you have those superstar um, teams. It, it's it's hard for somebody just coming out. Nobody knows who you are. Nobody's dealt with you before. It's it's pretty hard to to come out and um, and just get a, a banging roster. You know, I, I was very fortunate that I got the roster I did. But people knew who I was um, because I've uh, I've been in esports for long, that long, so people knew who I was, and it made it a little bit easier. But it still didn't it didn't better my chances 100%. I mean, I didn't have a top four team to start off. I started with a top 12 team, you know, in, in Call of Duty. But to say. To, for a, a newer organization to come in and, and automatically get a top team is very rare. It's very rare, you know. You have to have a good bit of money. And if you don't, I, I mean, there, there's always ways to do it. Uh, whenever you're first starting out, you, you you can always come in and, and grind the shit out of everything, you know. Uh, th that's definitely the key. You have to freaking grind. If you don't grind, you... You, you're not going to get anywhere. Um, and whenever it comes to, like, Shaq, man, 
You know, I, I was... <laughs> they they posted a video the first time I heard about Shaq. They posted a CS:GO video with Shaq inside like the game. <laughs> the game, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, he's, you know? he's always some goofy freaking commercial or some shit whenever he does them. This dude is a freaking nutcase, man. Like he is seriously a nutcase. Just uh, chasing the chicken and and just all. I, I don't know if you guys have seen that, but I'm pro I'm pretty sure you could probably go on Twitter and. Just type in the search bar Shaq uh, CSGO film and it'll bring it up. It's pretty nuts, man. Um, oh, I forgot to tell you guys. If you do hear dogs in the background, sorry, I have dogs. You can get over it. <laughs> you know, it happens. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, man, Shaq, uh, just such a large icon. I mean, pretty much everybody knows him, you know. Pretty much everybody knows him, regardless if you watch basketball or what you do. You pretty much know who Shaquille O'Neal is. I mean, I, I've known Shaquille O'Neal since he was right around his high school age because he went to LSU, and I'm originally from Louisiana. So um, I, I watched him play in, in college. I watched him progress in college, and he was just a beast, man. Um, God, he was a beast in college. He just freaking wrecked shop. And then he comes over and, and goes to Orlando, you know, and he just completely bangs people, like seriously bangs people. And, and of course, he wins his championships and all that other stuff. But it, it's, pretty, it's pretty awesome to see big names like that investing in esports. It's exactly what esports need. Um, if you don't have that growth, then it'll stutter, you know. Uh what have you seen anything about Shaq and all that? Uh, yeah, I saw I saw the commercial. I got a good little laugh out of it. Um, you know, guys like Shaquille O'Neal. Um, I believe Rick Fox is investing in teams. The owners of the Dallas Mavericks is investing in teams. And yeah, if he's I, I forgot. Then most likely, right. he knows what he's doing. You know, so you know, I, f I forgot about I forgot about uh, Rick Fox, man. Uh, yep. Rick Fox has his own organization by himself. You know, that's pretty substantial. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so it's nice to see guys like that. You know. Coming and investing, you know, obviously if they're investing it, they know this is getting bigger. Um, again, with the TV station, you know, it's 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 on there. And I think in the future here, we're going to see a dedicated station where it's just 24-7 eSports, uh, you know, CSGO, League of Legends, whatever the case would be. Um, you know, we're going to really see it grow from here. Yeah, Jay. Just to answer your question, and Chad, the the owner of Rice is in. A, he was an ex NFL player. Yeah, I, I see a lot of guys um, streaming too. I mean, Rampage Jackson. He was on Rainbow Six constantly streaming. Yeah, dude, and he's freaking a beast on Rainbow Six. I was watching him play. He's actually pretty good, man. Grind. He grinds. Hell yeah, man. I mean, at first, whenever he first started streaming it, I was like, oh man, he he needs to not do that. But then he started getting better, dude. Like he he's pretty good now. He's pretty decent. I mean, I, I in a normal person, uh, in a normal person that's uh, that plays, you know, he's about average, you know. But for the time that he can't, he can't put into gaming, he's pretty good, you know. He's pretty good. Yeah, he stays on there quite a bit. Uh, I actually got in touch with him about setting up a, a match against one of the pro teams, so that was pretty cool. Oh, that's um, awesome, man. I yeah. think they ended up doing something with Lethal Six, or I, I can't remember. He ended up doing something with one of the teams. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think it was the Lethal Six. I think I remember seeing that, mm. um, which was weird because Lethal Six hasn't been in a pro league. Maybe they wanted to have more even match. I don't know. Uh, maybe maybe that was the case. Well, I mean, we weren't going to beat up on them. We were going <laughs> to take a friendly match. Fans or whatever, whoever want to play with him, you know. Yeah, hell with that, man. I, if it was me, I would have jumped on his ass and just beat the shit out of you know. I would have made sure I had sledge and made sure I just knocked him down and then go kill him with sledge, you know. But speaking I don't know, of Grant Jackson's the guy you want to beat up on. Though. Yeah, you know. Speaking of sledge, though, man, I, I was watching the video. I think I think the the pro league actually tweeted it out. It was uh, <laughs> this guy freaking. He goes, he, he knocks down a guy, and he's going with Sledge 
Well, somebody else comes and he's teabagging and all this other stuff, and he's about to swing the sledge, and somebody kills him. Oh, dude, that was freaking awesome! It just teaches you guys if you're playing Rainbow Six Siege, make sure you kill your guy. Don't don't showboat because you're gonna die. You know, yeah. <laughs> you're gonna troll. You better hurry up and troll. Yeah, Rainbow Six is such a fast-paced game in trading that <laughs> you you better get that kill because they're gonna come after your ass. <laughs> yeah. I think be watching yeah, especially if if it's um, like if you're playing a team. Oh God, man, they're they're gonna get you. They they they're just gonna put you down in a heartbeat. They're gonna trade you off unless you're really good and you're pre aiming or something, you know. But that's not the case if you have a sledge in your hand about to try to obliterate somebody. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, man, it, it, it's just completely growing. I mean, you look at just look at optic for a second, you know. Yeah. They just in the past, let's say six months, they've got turtle wax, and they've gotten bris mate. That is huge. I mean, bris mate is a brand new product, and I think it's a really good thing that they did by going to optic and getting optic to actually promote it. Because I mean, as big as optic is on content, you know, and yeah, from true. what I've heard, it's all good reviews on the actual. Um, on the actual drink or whatever but regardless people don't really care about that um it, as long as they see let, let's just say they see hex for example they see hex drinking that bris mate they're gonna want to go get it regardless if it tastes like shit they see him he, he's he's very known you know and I, I just think it's a great thing i mean i really think it's a great thing and uh, speaking of turtle wax like I use turtle wax. I have a thing. I saw it today in the in the uh, garage whenever I was cleaning out the the EX closet, and I saw a thing of turtle wax, and I'm like, no shit, you know, no shit. I use that, uh, and I didn't realize it. You know, it, it's just things like that that you see, and that you you're like, man, you know, I use that, and it's it's in the esports now. You know, it, people are actually promoting that with a team playing a game you know it's pretty exciting yeah i think with the um you know with the growth and the amount of money that's coming into esports you're obviously going to see a lot more of these bigger companies uh gillette and all that you know jumping in on it because obviously there's a lot of growth and there's going to continue to be a lot of growth um every year you know growth growth will um growth will come you know it is it, it's gone fast so far. It it really has been. Um, I I didn't expect it. Like I said, I didn't expect it two years ago. Getting into this, saying, "Hey, I'm gonna get." Um, we're gonna see pretty much 400 percent growth in a, in a two year span, and that's amazing numbers. I mean, I was looking at some more numbers. It's at 200. I think it was at 257 million dollars that esports is worth this year. In revenue and it's projected in 2017 to climb to over a billion just look at that number in itself you know one bill over one billion dollars of revenue in esports itself you know and it's only going to get bigger with people like brisk and turtle wax and um tbs and gillette all coming in you know, I was telling you earlier, Gillette has a freaking stadium named after them for the New England Patriots playing it. You know, Gillette Stadium. Just uh, just knowing that a lot of people from football know, hey, Gillette, and they, they'll see a, a commercial with eSports, Gillette promoting them, and they'll be like, oh, shit, you know, that's that's pretty good. So, pretty I, good. right, I, I just think that I just think that they're doing a good job when it comes to um expanding the scene you know yeah absolutely um like you said it's nice to see all of them coming in and, and with that revenue going up to you know over a billion dollars at what point do these these top games you know and even some of the players these guys are in houses mm -hmm. on salary i mean it's just crazy to think that some of these guys are 18 years old making you know whatever they're making mm -hmm. playing a game being yeah. the best yeah i just think that the only thing i think with all this growth i think that the everyone just needs to step back 
and, and look at the whole big picture. I don't think enough people look at the big picture of things and they're they're expecting one thing and they get another result. So I think they need to look at a big a big picture and see what they can do to to better everything because th there's still problems with contracts. There's still problems with with um with just everything, you know, payments and all that other th I I don't I don't understand me personally for a good while whenever I first started Excellence, I wrote my own contracts, you know. Um and then I said to myself, you know, this is a this is a business. I have to protect myself, you know. I have to make sure that everything's protected. And that's when I, I contacted a lawyer and I was like, hey, we need to get this correct, you know. And it may be a long contract. <laughs> it might be tough to read at times, but it protects me and it protects my players that play for me. Because I don't want anybody to ever say, hey, excellence screwed us out of this. Excellence. No, no, no. I didn't screw nothing. <laughs> it's right there, buddy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that... I think that with the growth of esports, people need to really sit down and think about the whole picture and make sure that they're 100 percent good because somebody's going to get screwed and and then they're going to cry and it's going to be all over media and esports sucks and this and that. So people just need to be careful what they're doing. Yeah, I think with the growth, like you said, you know, it's going to be a learning process. Contracts are going to be messy or whatever the case is going to be. Um, hopefully, they get all that smoothed out especially with, you know the payments stuff like that getting paid from these tournaments that you win um right. they, hopefully they can expedite these processes and just make them a little more simple for these guys on it, playing it, so. it's crazy whenever it comes to payments you know the when you 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 expect okay i won i won on friday let's say and then you come off <clears throat> two weeks later well where's my payment it's still not here what the shit is going on you know uh, that's one thing I think they need to really look at. Um, they really need to look at the actual uh, payment system because these guys, when they win, they don't they don't want to wait. They 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 want it. They want their money. They deserve their money. So I think they need to figure out some way to have that money sitting. Make it make it a thirty day window. You know something they. I think right now most most of these companies have a ninety day window, which yeah, it's ninety days roughly. Yeah. Which you know some of these tournaments, it's say I win a tur we win a tournament, it's a hundred bucks per person. Mm -hmm. You gotta wait three months to get a hundred bucks, forty yeah. bucks on yeah. these smaller ones. You know we're just playing for fun, like it, hey. exactly. And it, 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 it's not even most of the time it's not even about the money per se. It's just about being consistent. You know some one one tournament they might. They might pay out in 15 days. The next tournament, it's exactly at 90-day mark, you know. They, I think they just need to come up with some kind of consistent way to have all of this um, running, you know. Uh, we talked a little bit about WESA, -E the WESA or whatever they're calling it, yep. you know. I have mixed feelings about it, but I think – Overall, they're trying to do good, and they're trying to do some of the stuff that we're talking about, structure esports. But, I mean, you guys correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, you know. Um, I, I believe that some of the points are off a little bit. Uh, I wouldn't, me personally, I wouldn't have ESL being kind of like the spearhead of everything. Uh, because they are, they're the self-proclaimed or even proclaimed largest um tournament company in the world you know and it's difficult to have an open mind when you have the largest company in the world pretty much dictating what they want that's one thing i didn't agree with i, I agree with the the teams being in and the teams having a say so with like some of those sanctioned events but whenever it comes to the ESL just spearhead, and I, I don't believe they should be the spearhead. It, it should be a, a third-party uh, company that's not involved with that particular um, with that particular game, I should say, you know? Yeah, I know. Uh, I remember watching a 
radio something and talking about it and how it's kind of getting where it's almost like boxing. You got so many different belts and organizations that nobody really knows who plays for what or where. Um, so it would be nice to really just see either one, you know, company, not like ESL, but, <clears throat> you know, just one big org, and then under that there's different tournaments or whatever the case would be. Right. So, you know, everybody's not so many different things going on, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Uh it's just to me, it's a little bit weird <laughs> that they would have did that. But hey, they're they're trying. You know, I, I can't I can't fault them for trying. I think they're doing a a good job trying. I mean, I, I think I think Phase actually backed out. They were in and backed out. I'm not 100 percent sure on that, but I believe that's what the talks were. That was the rumor at about a month ago that they were backing out. Um, not sure the particulars on why they were backing out or whatever, but I know Envious is in it, uh, Fanatic is in it, so you have some big you have some big organizations in there that can actually make change, you know, into the 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 structure of esports as a whole, um, but they have to do it the right way, you know, they're gonna have to do it not only in the interest of themselves, but in the interest of the whole scene. And if they can do that, they're gonna. It's gonna change the outlook of esports, and it's gonna be a little bit easier on some of these are uh, smaller organizations like me. You know, it is gonna make it a little bit easier to be able to follow some of these things. Because, like you said, with boxing, I just think there's way too many. Look at CS:GO. They have it. Pretty much have a different tournament every weekend. They have a, a CS:GO players all have. Probably five, close to four to five pro league matches for different uh, pro leagues throughout the week. I think that's just crazy. You know, uh, it, it gets it gets tiring. Yeah, and some people say, "Oh, well, they're just they're just uh, sitting there and they're just gonna be playing a game." But playing but a game the, takes the a issue. Lot, you know? The issue comes in when you know you have all these different leagues, these different events. Some of these events um, step on each other's toes. So now you got well, our top team, you know, Cloud Nine's not going to be here, but these other guys will be here. Instead of having all the top teams at one one event, they're spread out, you know. So they were saying that was one of the big issues you're going to see is just having these top teams spread out so much. Instead of really seeing the best competition at each event, you're going to be missing out on all these orgs because there's so many tournaments stepping over each other. Right. It, it, that's exactly right. You know, it, it, it's just going to have to be structured. I mean. Uh, like I was saying, you know, uh, even they're stepping on each other's toes. Players are getting tired, you know. You wouldn't think that you can actually get a, a injury <laughs> from playing, but you can. Uh, like, you can you can get carpal tunnel and all these other things, you know, uh, just from playing. So, people, it's a risk you take, you know. The NFL guys go out there. These CSGO guys, they're making some big money. So, I mean, you want to make that money, you got to be on that grind. you got to risk that carpal tunnel, I guess. Exactly, exactly. Your camera's off, by the way. Yeah, my bad there. No, you good, you good. But, yeah, man, it, it, it's just a crazy thing. But um, moving on for the next segment, uh, this is your first time on the show. So our next segment is uh, Q&A. Uh, first, we have questions from people in the chat, and then – if we don't have enough questions, of course, I have some prepared already for us. So, in the chat, we're going to give you guys about two minutes. Let's get some questions going on for me, Sean, any, anything. Doesn't matter what it is, just ask away. Let me give me some nicotine in my body. It's all I hear when we play together. <laughs> going off in the background. If if you're under the age of 18, I'd strongly recommend not getting on nicotine. It's very hard to get away from. It's horrible. <laughs> I've been doing it for. I've been on nicotine for 18 years. And it's crazy. <laughs> I don't think hey. I got that many years in yet. <laughs> All right, so we got the first question. Uh, What's your favorite esports team? And he said, don't say EX. It's from HCS Homeboy. Welcome to the stream, buddy. Don't say EX. Don't say <laughs> EX. Um, 
Honestly, I don't, I don't know off the top of my head. I can't even think off the top of my head, honestly. Um, I, I can't. I can't give you an honest answer on that. <laughs> can't, can't give you an honest. I, I mean, I watch a lot of it, but to say that I'm really, um, you know, 100% set on one team or one organization, I, I want to go as far to say that. So, I just enjoy the uh, esports scene in itself. So it's like I said, it's nice to see it grow and different orgs coming in and out. Right. Oh yeah. All right. Second question. With the growth of esports, do you see player players unions being formed to protect the players in all games? This um, is a question for both of us. So you go ahead and go first. You want me to go first? Uh, yeah. absolutely. Um, like I said, you start getting an income of a billion dollars or more, uh, players are gonna want to get paid. Guys are want to get paid. Without the players, there's no league. Same thing in the NFL, NBA, everywhere around. You know, these players want to get paid. Um, and and some of them are. Some of these guys, CS:GO guys, these guys are getting paid good money. They're living in mansions getting to hang out play video games and get paid you know uh so absolutely i could see that uh there could be unions in the future uh, to protect the players protect the orgs and make sure that everybody's getting a fair share of the the pie you know yeah i i'm gonna agree with you 100 percent. i believe that the uh we'll see some unions uh i believe organizations within pro leagues should be in some kind of uh union partnership with each other to where they have just a mutual mutual agreement you know it, it, it's tough it, it's tough with the player trading and benching the player and stuff like that so whenever it comes to unions and stuff I, I see it in the future I really do now again if it's handled the right way we'll see you know um, it could go very good or it could be very bad. It just depends on who approaches the the actual um, the actual union, and that's how it's going to go from there. You know. Yeah, I think it'll depend on the games, um, right. and the prize pools. If if a game's not that high up as a prize pool, when you got CS:GO paying out 1.5 million or whatever, you know, absolutely, those guys are going to want to get paid. Mm -hmm. um, some of the smaller games maybe won't have a union or anything like that, but uh, you know, that's expected. It's yeah. a business. Everybody needs to enjoy what they're doing and make out on the in the long run. Yeah, you you know everybody needs to realize that too. Uh, yes, there we're all playing games for a living. Some of us for a living. We just need to realize that it is a business. You know, we we all grow personal personal friendships. I'm really good friends. I find with you guys. You know, I talk to you guys all the time. Bullshit with you guys. Uh, but whenever we have to be professional, we have to be professional because in the long run, it is a business. We have to do what's best for the business, you know. Um, next question from Media Brute. Uh, if you weren't a, a Rainbow Six Pro player, what would you play? What's going on, Media Brute? Um, honestly, I really uh, I really got back into the competitive scene because of Rainbow Six. Uh, it's, it's a game I was pretty dominant at. Uh, I didn't get the opportunity to go to the pro level. Uh, I went to the military, so it was nice to come back five, six, seven, eight years later, whatever the case may be, and, and have another Rainbow Six and be able to compete again. Um, as you know, a lot of people don't like flying around maps, so I'd probably play Call of Duty for fun, but at a competitive level, um, I think this is really the main game that I'd be competing at, uh, other than, you know, out of anything else. I don't think I'd really compete besides Rainbow Six. Yeah. If I wasn't a pro player in Rainbow Six, I would be, I would probably play Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey. what else? I mean, there's not a lot of. I'm not. I'm not really into the uh, you know League of Legends, MOBAs, whatever they're called. Yeah, you uh, you know, I, I play pretty much every game except for Smite because we just picked up the Smite team. That's the only game I have it, and I played it before, but I just. I don't play it competitively because I'm not sure about it, you know. <laughs> so, but other other than that, it, it, I, I play a lot of Halo. Um, I play a lot of Halo, and I'm actually decent at the game. Uh, I, I wouldn't consider myself to be even a, a top amateur by no means, but I'm decent at the game for being over 30 years old and and rocking on some of those 16 and 17 year olds it feels pretty good you know and jay said in the chat he's watched my stream before whenever i'm getting perfects and shit you know and whenever I, when the first game first came out i would scream at the top of my at the top of my lungs <laughs> Perfect, i, uh, bitch, I picked you know? up halo when it first came out the time he over till uh rainbow dropped i, I yeah. thought i was pretty good at it i don't know i never got a chance to play the 
with any pros because I switched over to Rainbow. But yeah. uh, I, f- I forgot about Halo. I'd, pr- I'd probably be Halo out of all of them compared to see uh, COD or anything like that. Yeah, Halo definitely. The most fun. Yeah, definitely. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and read off some of the questions I have just because uh, that's pretty much it in the chat for right now. Uh, guys, you feel free to sit there and, and spam some questions if you want. Don't spam. Just give us some good questions. <laughs> but um, number one, what is your favorite part of the Rainbow Six Pro League? Uh, outside of qualifying, you know, getting to do all that. Uh, every Monday, getting to compete, getting to go on stream. Um, you know, getting to see what the chat says. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you suck, praise the... Yeah, I know, I know. But, uh... <laughs> You know, it's 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 fun. It's definitely exciting. Um, hopefully, it continues to grow and we continue to uh, do good things. So, yeah, you know, whenever it comes to the the pro league and the chats, man, the <laughs> chats can be so toxic, dude. You just can't uh, have the time. You can't even read them because they're so toxic. You know? Oh, why is he a pro? Why is he a pro? Well. You're sitting at home watching the pro league, so you tell me, buddy. <laughs> you know exactly. Yeah. You know, a lot of these teams, they don't these these players, the teams, they if they don't make it, they they want to talk and talk and talk, and it's like, man, you had the same opportunity to go through the brackets as everybody else. Eventually, when you get to the top four or eight, you got to beat one of us to get in. Exactly. And and if you're not at that level, then sit in the chat and talk shit or whatever you're gonna do. <laughs> exactly. At the end of the day, you know, on Mondays, I'm I'm playing. Yeah. So, and if you want to get to that level, you got to put the time in. You got to grind. You got to have a team that's willing to play and play. <laughs> Icy has a question for you. He said, "Overall, how's the org treating you so far? Be honest. Hundred percent honest. Be honest. John's an asshole. Uh, no, but uh, <laughs> no, no. Uh, he, like I said before, uh, John's been John's been very good um, as far as doing whatever he's got to do on his end uh, to get." whatever needs to be done you know some of our players were using shit controllers that fucking had drift and whatever else on them john took care of them um guys had shit headsets that were echoing while we were trying to play john you know whatever they needed if, if to help us get to the you know our highest level john took care of it so so far you know as far as that aspect it's been great um you know, he's he's been taking care of us. Yeah, but you say you say in that aspect, what the what the hell is that supposed to mean? You you, you want people as to far as you making line? sure that your players you know are playing at the highest level and they have the gear to do that. I mean, you can't have a player in a, get an FPS like this where your shot has to be pretty accurate for the most part. It's not like Call of Duty, um, where you have regenerating life mm-hmm. and uh, you know you could dip out. You get fucking hit, you're hit. You got to hit that shot. So if you got stick drift, you know. So John's taking care of us, making sure that those you know those guys have um, the gear they need to be able to compete at the highest level. So good, good. All right. Uh, how special would it be to bring home EX's second Rainbow Six Championship in two seasons, and not only two the second championship, but also with a different roster completely from last year? Um, how crazy would that be? You know. I mean, definitely. I mean, from your obviously, from your standpoint, for your org, that's that's awesome. And I hope we can deliver deliver that for you. And I expect us to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, we do have a completely rebuilt roster. Um, I don't know if some of you guys know. I was last season, season one pro league. I was on orbit. Uh, things didn't fare so well, so you know, I had a week to put an entirely new uh, roster together. Um, went out on a limb with a few players, and it, and it turned out good. And uh, I really think we have a, a very strong team this year. So I think it would be big. I think it would be huge for the, the org and ourselves. Um, definitely something we're striving to do right now. Yeah. What team do you feel is the best in the league and why? Best in the league? Besides us, of Come course. On <laughs> um, 2016 EX versus 2015 EX. All right, so here's the breakdown. I mean, top teams, I'll give you the top three would be ourselves, um, obviously. Denial. And at the moment, Elevate or rewritten, rewritten according to points. We'll see how it turns out. But, um, yeah, I think we really are the best, gun skill-wise, the best team in the league by far, um, mm-hmm. the most dominant. Uh, we've beaten Denial, the old EX, 
a lot of times. They might not like me saying that, but we have. You can look at the records. Right, it is what it is. Um, but at the end of the day, those guys come prepared. You know, when it comes to pro league, it's not GB. It's not a fucking bullshit tournament. Like I told Fighter, you know, you guys come prepared. They put the time in. Uh, unfortunately, we gave them a map um, that they were very dominant at, at bank. Should have that happened? Absolutely not. That's on my end. They're, you know, forgetting that they're top maps. So if, if we don't get that map, we 2 owe them all day in my mind. Absolutely. I think it was just a shit map. It didn't pan out how we wanted to. Uh, I, I really do think we were probably the most dominant team in the league. We're put, we got a record. We got almost 90 wins, four losses, seven tournament wins. Um, we've been pretty pretty fucking dominant this season, without a doubt. Yeah. That's why I picked you guys up. I mean. <laughs> um, next question. Who is the most explosive player on EX Rainbow Six? On, the, on our team, our most explosive player? Uh, again, uh, I think we're probably one of the most dynamic teams in the league. Uh, you, I can say, hey, Skies, hey, Dash, hey, England, hey, Geo, can you fucking, we need you to attack here, do this. Um, these guys can play any character in the game. Again, we have the flexibility that most teams don't. We're able to switch up positions, switch up whatever we need um, to win a round. If we got to adjust mid-game, we can adjust mid-game. So it, I, I wouldn't say we just have one explosive player. I mean, yeah. Our slayers are going to slay. Guys, uh, Geo's running Ash, Dash, you know, on Twitch. We expect those guys um, to go in the building or whatever the case is and, and slay out. So I think at any moment, any of us can be very explosive um, and really pick, you know, drop numbers or cause havoc around the map. So I would say our whole team is an explosive team all together. Good, good, good answer. All right, last question of the night. Um, how do you expect our season to unfold? Being right now, we're still, uh, you can pretty much say we're undefeated uh, as far as uh, in, in um, total match. You know, we, we do have the one tie versus denial. Mm -hmm. But how do you expect our season to unfold? I think, uh, I think it's going to come down to these next three weeks here. These next three weeks are going to be some big matches. Uh, as long as we continue to put the preparation in and the time in. Um, we're, we're not a team that's highly strategic, you know. We have the gun skill that allows us to do that. So I think there's going to be some good matchups. But at the end of the day, I think it's we're going to be one of the top two teams going to uh, the lane event and represent EX for the championship again. Yeah, that would be pretty nice, you know, to to have, a, have you guys go. I'd definitely be going for sure this time. I wasn't able to go to the last one just because uh, – just came back from Hawaii, and I had my kids the next weekend. That weekend, so I couldn't, I couldn't go. And my kids are more important, of course. So yeah, yeah that's the only reason why I didn't go to that, to that one. So, um, yeah, I had a chance to go out there. It was pretty, uh, it was pretty fun. It was nice. It was nice. Really? Yeah. Pax East is normally nice. Um, I've been to a few Paxes. Uh, not Pax East, of course, but I've heard it, it's pretty rocking over there in Boston, for sure. Yeah, it was a good time. Nice. So definitely, uh, definitely looking forward to uh, you know, hopefully making the land. We don't know where it's at yet. From what I've heard, it's going to be in L.A. or Cali somewhere, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, we'll see where it ends up. Hell, they might even do like they did with their PC guys and send them to Germany. You know, I think it was Germany. Yeah, I think the uh, the PC, the, they're a little more heavier in the PC for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, if you'd like watching guys hang out with ACOGs camping around all day, by all means. <laughs> I think our gameplay is a little more fun, a little more complicated. You know, not being able to use, you know, having such accurate shots um, and being able to camp around with ACOGs. I definitely think the Xbox NA EU is uh, more aggressive, in my opinion. But, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens as the sport continues to grow and uh, see where it goes here. Yeah, I, I believe I believe um, if done right, they can really m help grow the Rainbow Six community and the, the the pro scene. You know, I think they're doing a pretty good job so far at it. Um, uh, they they they've it's they on could, Ubisoft and Microsoft. They really need to put the time into um, you know the commentary, everything else. You watch you watch these COD esports. These guys in between breaks, they got replays. They talk about the players. They're more in depth. Mm -hmm. So I really think um, if they continue with what they're doing and really get a little more in-depth with the players, 
and their presentation. I think their presentation really, um, hopefully, it'll continue to get better. Yeah. Uh, you know, continue to grow from there. Definitely, definitely. But anyway, guys, that's pretty much it for the Q and A. Um, we got about two to three minutes left. Uh, uh, I want to thank you guys for being here in the chat. Um, thank you guys for spreading the news about the episode two of of the EX podcast. Um, definitely appreciate you coming on, Sean, and and taking time out of your practice schedule to come and talk to everyone and and chill out. Uh, but yeah, man. Uh, I really do appreciate everybody that came in, all the questions, all the positivity in the chat. I love to see it. Uh, we might not have the most viewers right now, but consistency, man. That's all That's all we strive for here is consistency. If we can stay consistent, we're good to go. Um, but, yeah, guys, uh, we'll go ahead and, and call it a night here. We'll have Sean's um, Twitter information and any, anything in the YouTube video that we create. We'll have it all in the description along with mine. So until next week, I'll see you guys later. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me on, man. So it's fun as always. Peace out, guys.